a corporation such as Apple has resources that are virtually unlimited. So it's a testament to the workers that they are fighting back against such a behemoth of a corporation. I did have a little bit of an update from the CWA that they put out recently. Uh, Apple has escalated its anti-union campaign, firing five workers at its country club plaza store in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, so this is a southern story. Uh, on Tuesday, March 28th, CWA filed unfair labor practice charges with the National Labor Relations Board to contest those illegal terminations and the ongoing intimidation of workers at Apple's Memorial City store in Houston. Last May, the CWA was forced to abandon an election in Atlanta in the face of daunting union busting by Apple. In June, the very first Apple store went union with workers in a Baltimore store organizing with the machinist. Uh, so before I get to the, the pre full press release here from the CWA about this, I do want to mention that uh, Apple has its Alabama connection through Tim Cook, who is, I believe, the CEO um, of Apple. I'm not sure what other titles he may hold, uh, but he's an Alabama native. Really? Uh, yes. I did not know that. Uh, I'm <laughs> feeling... Now you're making me question myself, and I should <laughs> you should probably Google that to okay. confirm. Uh, <laughs> yes, he is from Mo Mobile, Alabama. Okay. I knew I didn't make that up. Uh, all right. How's that for some live fact-checking, y'all? Um, so, yeah, Tim Cook is uh, running Apple. He's from Alabama, and so occasionally we'll get these articles from the Alabama media about, you know, high-profile Alabamians. And... Um, I don't know. I, I, as an Alabamian, I'm curious why this high-profile Alabamian uh, is intent on union busting. Why? Why are you busting the union organizing drives in your stores uh, when you're an extremely profitable corporation? Uh, you've got it made. You're one of the most successful corporations in the history of the world. And you can't let some folks organize in your retail stores? You got to go intimidate folks in Houston, Texas. You're going to go fire some folks in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. It's just ridiculous. Back to the CWA. Uh, as I said, they filed two unfair labor practice charges with the NLRB on behalf of the Apple retail workers in Kansas City and Houston who have been fired and have faced intimidation on the job for exercising their right to organize. This is the first ULP filed by CWA against Apple for the unlawful termination of workers for union organizing. The charges allege that Apple illegally fired five workers at the Country Club Plaza store in Kansas City and that some of the fired workers were forced to sign a release of all claims in exchange for a meager severance package. Now, last month, the NLRB ruled that employers cannot require broad severance agreements that prevent former employees from speaking out against the union busting and other issues they experienced on the job. Uh, evidently, Apple did not get that memo. At the Memorial City store in Houston, Apple workers were individually interrogated regarding their support of the union, promised improved working conditions if they declined to support the union, and threatened with, work, threatened with worsening workplace conditions if they continued to organize. Workers were also disciplined in retaliation for their continued support of the union. Apple management said I was fired for a typo in my timesheet that I had documented and tried to correct. Yet it is clear the real reason I was fired was for exercising my right to organize and win a protected voice on the job. Apple then attempted to silence me by having me sign a release in order to receive my severance package. No one working at Apple should be interrogated, intimidated, or silenced for trying to organize and win our fair share, said Delight Zong, former Kansas City, Missouri Apple retail worker. Since Apple retail workers began organizing a little over a year ago, the company has chosen the low road, retaining the notorious union-busting firm Littler Mendelssohn, and launching a coordinated national union busting campaign. Workers at multiple stores have experienced the same types of interrogation, intimidation, and attempted silencing. 
In response, CWA has filed numerous ULPs against the trillion-dollar company for violating its workers' rights to organize for better pay and working conditions. CWA has now filed ULPs alleging retaliation against worker organizing by Apple at retail stores in Atlanta, New York, Oklahoma City, Houston, and Kansas City. I'm going to pause there to point out, um, I notice a southern theme there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five cities, and four out of the five are arguably in the south. You know, is that an indication of Apple's behavior and attitude towards the south? Does Apple think that because we're the South and these are right-to-work states that uh, it's the Wild West and you get to behave however you please? Claude Cummings, Jr., vice president of CWA District 6, had this to say. From Starbucks to Apple, the union-busting playbook used by unimaginably wealthy co corporations is always the same. Isolate, intimidate, fire, and silence. It is clear that Apple's senior management team does not respect their workers' legally protected right to organize and negotiate for better pay and working conditions. Apple has chosen to continue to break the law, so we will continue to hold the company accountable because no corporation is above the law. Apple's attempt to interfere with worker organizing is only strengthening the resolve of workers to win a seat at the negotiating table. Again, that was Claude Cummins, Jr., Vice President of CWA District 6. CWA recently won reinstatement and compensation for back pay and damages for Seattle-area Verizon wireless worker Jesse Mason, who was illegally fired by the company for union organizing activities. So, uh, really hope to see more successes like the one for Jesse Mason. Hopefully they can get these workers who were terminated back uh, with back pay and damages. But just a, you know, really shameful union busting by Apple. It's sad to see it. Uh, there's no need in it. The money that they're spending doing their union busting could be spent settling the contract, right? They could just sit down with these folks, recognize what they're trying to do. And, and that's, let me, I, I just have to say that that is an option, right? The company could choose to just recognize the workers' organizing efforts. Whenever you see these contentious battles, whenever you see these union campaigns that are being uh, attacked by the company, know that they have that option on the table. They do not have to take the low road. They choose to take the low road. And in some cases, they would rather spend more money doing that than if they had simply worked with the union. And that's, that's where you see a, a priority over power, a power over profits at, at some point. Um, they would rather crush the workers' organizing even if it costs them more money to do so. Uh, and, you know, obviously a corporation such as Apple has resources that are virtually unlimited. Uh, so it's a testament to the workers that they are fighting back against such a behemoth of a corporation. Uh, so shout out to the CWA, sending all our uh, support and solidarity with y'all as y'all fight these battles in Kansas City and Houston and Atlanta and across the South, across the country. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.